Well, today's video, I decided to do a little experimenting for you guys to show you moisture in refrigerant oils and how it affects them. And the difference between plastic bottles and metal cans. So metal cans is what refrigerant oil should always come in. But the cheap guys like to use plastic. And there's a reason you don't use plastic. And it goes bad really fast. So let's do this. I think this was this was used one time, opened, poured in an emergency, and then sealed. And uh, let's see if I can open it. There we go. So that'll be POE. HY is hybrid. This is hybrid oil. Ester. So that one. There we go. Yep. Put a little of that in there. Okay. Now the only air that got in there was the day that was punctured and poured out and then resealed. This is a uh, PEG 46, one of our most common refrigerant oils that we use, and this one is brand new, never opened. There we go. PEG 46. And so let's throw that one in there. Never opened. Brand new. Now it's open. And I will throw that in one of my metal syringe things now. Right now, this one's no good. Uh, this one's going into a syringe and that will all get used up by tomorrow. I go through a lot of oil. Peg 150. You haven't seen this stuff in years. Uh, when they switched over from R12 to 134, your old Yorks, your old Tecumsehs, your Frigidaire A6s, uh, a few others use this old 150. And actually, I know a shop that still, and I just, he I got him to get rid of it. He was still using 150 in everything and wondering why his compressors were burning up. Okay, and just open that, fresh, brand new. Okay. And then ND11. Now, you guys know this is like 200 and some dollars, so I'm not going to pour a lot of this out. If you know how much ND11 is, ah, Jesus Christ. Okay, I got an issue here. Hold on, let me uh. This down. There we go. And still sealed. Pop the seal. Okay. Alright. So let's get the seal out of there. Oh, this is a used one. But I think I have this one back flushed with nitrogen. I hope so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. See, I back flush my stuff with argon and nitrogen when I have these things and I use them. So we will find out. There we go. And now there's my nitrogen. So. Every time I pour, this is what I do. Okay, displace the air, put that rubber cap seal back on it. Now, and that'll go into a syringe for tomorrow. Now we'll take this off. You could tell I had a little explosion of dye in there. So, ND11, just opened brand new 150 in a plastic container. Just opened brand new 46 in uh, POE hybrid oil. Opened one time, capped immediately. Let me 
do this all one-handed and holding the camera. Okay, let's turn her on. And this is oh, uh, the Navac pump. A very, very, very good pump. Now I have somewhat of a micron gauge here, even though it's located in the wrong area. It's located in the machine. And we have a, it's not a compound, it's just a vacuum gauge right here. It goes from zero all the way to 30, negative 30 right there. Open that. Turn it on. Watch the needle move. This has not read yet because we're not even close. So really nothing. Any changes down there? We shouldn't see anything for a while. Not until we approach 30 or after 30, once we get into the microns. I'm getting there. Of course, still nothing there. That's the micron gauge. I should hook up a micron gauge here on the other side for you guys for going inside here. And not the best hose, but it's usable for what we're doing. Actually, I want to get one of the very large acrylic vacuum chambers that are acrylic and see-through from all, all sides, all six sides, bottom, top, everything. Ah, there we go. We got some action going on there. Look at the bubbles forming. Ah, shoot. I should have cleaned off the lens. But look at the bubbles forming. Damn it. There we go. A little bit of bubbles forming there. A little bit of bubbles forming there. Now that was uh the PoE high voltage estero, you see all those bubbles? That was from this one. It was opened up. Okay, now this is the 150. You see the 150 right there? You see the bubbles forming? You see all that? That's the moisture boiling out. Here, let's go back to the the hybrid oil, the ester oil. So this is that ester oil right there. This is 150 peg oil. That was 150 peg oil that I just broke the seal on. That was that one right there. Oh yeah, 150. Let me get a clear spot in the glass since I didn't clean the glass. Oh, this guy's going real. Oh, what's this one doing, guy over here? The Peg 46. The Peg 46 is going to town. Hey, we could boil a couple noodles in there. Now, that Peg 46, this is brand new. I just purchased this from uh, O'Reilly's, and you see me break the seal. That's brand new, right out of the can, broke the seal. Brand new, right out of the can. Opened once, and opened once, but either I put nitrogen in it or argon in it to displace the moisture out of the air into the can before I sealed it before. So that was an open can. And let's go to that open can. Look at, 
Little bit of bubble there. That was the ND11. But look at this guy. This is the high voltage uh, ester oil right there. That is moisture saturated. And it's just bubbling up a storm. So this is what happens when you crack open a can one time. This was cracked open one time, air went inside, that's now garbage. This has been sealed and I just broke open the seal on it. And this has been sealed and broke open the seal on it. And there's the PEG 46. And there's the 150. Come on, give me a clear shot, guys. That was sealed. But look at that ester oil, polyester oil. Let me shake it a little bit. That's a little bit out of the ND11 there. That's the one that I opened before. But this is the worst one right here. Because this was the one that was cracked open once and resealed without putting uh, no argon or no nitrogen to displace the air. As you pour out oil, moist air goes in, that's it, it's gone. One time use, after that, it's garbage. And all these are minimum. That was opened once and backfilled and displaced the air with uh, nitrogen. That's what that one was there. But this one got no nitrogen to it and it's boiling away. And we're at 240 microns at this point so it's probably about 600 microns in here it's a lot of loss a lot of line loss sometimes ah there it goes look at that that was Take 46 right there. That was brand new sealed. And look at that peg 150. Brand new sealed. So it's very, these oils absorb. I wish I had some mineral oil to show you. My mineral oil is over at my other shop and uh, for R12. And I show you the difference on how mineral oil does not absorb oil like this. This is why when you open up a system in your shop and you just leave the lines open overnight, it absorbs so much moisture into the oil so fast. All right, that's your uh, quick, very sloppily, I didn't even clean the inside of the gospel, you guys. Quick little thing. I think what I'll do is I'll grab one of these other ones that haven't been or the cans that have not been oiled opened i think this might be one that's not opened this is an nd11 and i think i think this one has never been opened i think this one has never been opened so we'll do that one later and i'll show you what a not opened one looks like it's hard for me to find one that was, wasn't open. Yeah, that wasn't open. And that's about it. Okay. And we're at 215 microns right now. Alright guys, I will see you. And for you guys, oh, you haven't seen, if you haven't seen my old videos of the field, like the field piece, if you, some guys wanted the part number, I was asked for the part number a couple times for the rebuild kits. For the new, you get the new knobs and you get the new uh, piston valves with the O-rings on them. This is the part number. So you call up a uh, field piece or True Tech Tools or something and you order one of these. And then go find my video on uh, rebuilding your field piece 
if you think you have leaks inside the valves or anything like that after you use them for a while uh, my video shows on how to re replace those all right i'll see you later